Welcome to the Low Carb USA podcast, where we seek to inspire you to help us build this community. I'm Doug Reynolds. And this is Pam Devine. So I have and Dr. Angie Osborne and Dr. Jeremiah Eisenshank here with me. They're both from the uh, Brainerd Lakes, Minnesota area. And the reason that we're talking today is that we have decided to put on a one day event in Brainerd Lakes in September. So um, Jeremiah put one on a couple, couple of years ago um, and has, I think, been hank hankering to, to do it again. Um, and Angie knew us through, through being an attendee at our, at our San Diego event. And so we just got talking about whether we could turn this into a, an, um, a, an, a, an SMHP slash low carb USA event as opposed to um, just a, a event bright event, <laughs> um, for lack of a better term. Uh, so I would like to get the sort of your backgrounds to start with. Maybe start with Jeremiah. Tell us like how it is that you are now doing this in your practice and how, how, how you decided to do this and then possibly why you feel it's so important to have like a community-based event like we're going to do this time. Yeah, Doug, really excited to, to be on and join you today. Really pumped for the conference coming up in September. Like you mentioned, we'll get more to those details later. So ironically, my story really begins in 2016 when I attended a CME just down the shore from where this event will be at a different resort. Uh, the topic of that was um, why we get fat, and what to do about it. And it was given by Steve Park, Dr. Steve Park, who's kind of the OG of metabolic health and weight management for Northern Minnesota. Um, I remember being struck in that uh, lecture, you know, by hearing things like insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, de novo lipogenesis, the impact of sugar and starch on metabolic health and leaving that day, a few years into my practice, thinking, God, I never learned this stuff in med school or residency. Mm -hmm. um, upon some further reflection, I even had to dive a little deeper into my own journey and think, you know, I, I gained 30, roughly 30 pounds through my postgraduate and graduate school training. And this was despite thinking I was eating the right stuff, right, and exercising and running. Um, you know, I, I had to kind of look within. So this led to really a personal and professional journey. Um, after hearing Dr. Park's lecture, I ended up going to Low Carb Breckenridge in 2017, where I got to learn from the likes of Eric Westman, Jason Fung, Andrea Seinfeld, David Unwin, um, Nina Teicholtz. I mean, just some legends in the low carb space were there. And that really catapulted my interest. Coming back to my primary care practice, I started to kind of dabble, if you will, you know, sprinkle in some of these pearls about lifestyle and diet in my primary care patients. And I saw some pretty impactful results, even in six months, right? People putting their diabetes in remission, describing an absence of cravings, losing their abdominal fat. You know, so this kind of led to kind of the de novo um, interest within my within my healthcare system. I started a low carb interest group with other other docs and, and and NPs and APPs, and kind of jumping to 2018 and 19 with some support from other local community members. We started what was called Lake Area Low Carb, and this was just very grassroots. A couple of us talking to interested citizens and, and providers in a church. Ultimately, we repeated this in 2019. Uh, Eric Westman joined us from Duke, as well as um, the late uh, um, Adele Height and, uh, and, 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 and uh, others. And it was a fantastic turnout. We had 425 attendees, tons of great energy, and I think still having impact from that years later. Um, jumping forward, I was able to spend a few days with Dr. Westman at Duke in 2020, right before COVID. And before I toss it over to Angie, I'll just say that, you know, 2020, I really saw, I think, a unique convergence of my specialties. So I'm a hospitalist. I work a lot in the ICU. I also was a primary care doctor and started to practice this medicine in my clinic. And it became apparent, Doug, within a few months that all of the folks we were seeing in the ICU who were very critical uh, and, and sometimes passing away from this illness, they were metabolically ill. And it really shed light on kind of, a, you know, the importance of our metabolic health to me. And really, I was able to, in many cases, help those patients through that acute illness and then steer them back to our clinic where we can get to the root cause, like, like we'll talk more about today and we'll talk about at the conference, uh, as it pertains to those key pillars of health, nutrition, sleep, activity, mental health, community. And I think by way of that, you know, having a really transformative impact to the patients we're called to serve. And uh, I'll lastly just say before Angie, 
speaks in her story that, you know, about a year ago, Angie and I connected. You know, we only live 20 miles apart. We have a, a very similar interest in this space. We practice very similarly in our outpatient clinics, weight management. And it was from that uh, that, you know, we kind of birthed the idea with your support, Doug and Low Curve USA. Hey, why not try to bring this back? Let's try to revive this important topic. And really, I think this year, try to have more healthcare prof- professionals present. We are going to have CME available, some really delicious food, uh, lots of local vendors, and really kind of cascade this impact as we look to the future. Because we know that this issue of diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, it's everywhere. And it's, you know, we, we need to kind of educate those that, that lead and educate those that care for others. So yeah, that's absolutely. my story. And I'm, yeah. yeah, I think that was, a, you know, your meeting seemed to have a lot of more people from the mem- members of the public, um, whereas we, with our events, seem to focus more on the practitioners and reaching the patients through reaching the practitioners, because that's a much bigger ripple effect that we can. But we do have um, members of the public that come and attend as well. It's not like closed to them, um, but you know they all understand that that our focus is on the practitioner, and not to to teach the man in the street about how to do, you know, it's not a keto 101 course. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see, see how this goes, see how many practitioners we can reach in, in this one day event. Angie, uh, tell us where you, how you got here. So uh, I'll just start by telling a little bit about myself. I'm from Northern California, grew up there and, uh, went to college in Oakland uh, at Mills College and then went to Vanderbilt Medical School. And I came to Minnesota for my training in internal medicine and pediatrics. And there I met my uh, now husband, Kevin Smith. And I'm mentioning him because he is in charge of the charity golf event that we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, The two of us, uh, ended up moving to Milwaukee. He was a student and trained in radiology and he matched in Milwaukee. So I changed programs then and finished up there. And then we came back to Minnesota and I spent almost 25 years just doing general medicine, general pediatrics, hospital work. And then in the system that I worked at before coming to the Brainerd area, Uh, this was around 2013, they started uh, a bariatric surgery program and they wanted to be a center of excellence. And to do that, they needed medical weight management. I think it was almost an afterthought. It felt like to add them because I thought they thought the bulk uh, of the patients would be surgical patients, but it didn't turn out that way. The medical side just exploded. And when I started there, I really didn't know anything about obesity medicine. I mean, of course, knew about metabolic health being an internist, but I didn't know much. And when this program started, the only option they had for patients was meal replacement, a meal replacement plan. So uh, part of part of that uh, doing that was a commitment to become certified in obesity medicine. In 2013, there were maybe 500 physicians in the United States that were certified, and now it's 8,000. The field is really growing. So I went to my my first obesity medicine association meeting, and it was really an explosion for me of information. Uh, It's the first time that I really understood the role of insulin resistance, you, you know, you hear this your whole medical career starting in medical school, but you don't, I think most physicians, nurse practitioners, we don't really understand the full impact of what it's doing. And I think it became crystal clear at that meeting, the role it has on weight gain and obesity, and of course, developing type two diabetes. And at that time, there weren't big centers doing weight management. There were mostly uh, solo docs out there. There were a few exceptions. One, uh, Dr. Eric Westman was there. He had been the president of that organization for several years, over the years. And he talked about his program at Duke, a full ketogenic diet, and, you know, very credible institution. And this was about 
10 or 12 years into what he had been doing. And then there was another doc there um, that had three weight loss clinics and he had, he had good results with a, a carb reduced diet, higher protein and moderate carbohydrate restriction. And interestingly there, uh, my mentor assigned to me was Dr. Steve Park, who did Jeremiah's uh, talk in 2016, that, that conference. So I, I went back to my old institution and said, oh, you know, we need to incorporate these things and not just offer meal replacement plan. And they, well, the long and short is they weren't quite ready to do that. So I eventually left there uh, and just did this kind of work in my primary care clinic. I worked with patients and my partner patients to lose weight and improve their metabolic health. And uh, I eventually did go back to the big center because they, they evolved. They started offering whole food uh, plants, et cetera. So then in 2021, I had a wonderful opportunity to come here to the Brainerd Lakes area to start a obesity clinic, a medical weight management, metabolic health program, uh, joining a group of five bariatric surgeons. Uh, they're actually general surgeons and they all do bariatric surgery. And this is in a town of 2,500. It's a, yeah. So uh, is we're going to, business. yes, uh, Jeremiah is going to talk about this, but we have four health systems that are partnering to do this, which is a, a really a unique situation. And it's a recognition that metabolic health is a serious problem and is driving virtually all of our chronic diseases and 90% of Americans have at least some level of metabolic dysfunction. So anyways, I, I came up here uh, to the Brainerd area and uh, I met someone else at Jeremiah knows. We have a lot of crossing paths. Uh, Dr. Todd Breetons, he's a pulmonologist here. And he said, you know, you should go to Low Carb USA. And uh, so I, I looked at your website and the San Diego meeting. And I, and I recognized half of the speakers because I'd seen them at other conferences. And then I went to my first low carb USA meeting. And then there was another humongous explosion of information. And that's when it became crystal clear that insulin resistance, uh, it's not just obesity and diabetes. It, it's everything. It's heart disease, it's stroke, it's dementia. It's fatty liver disease, it's hypertension, it's high cholesterol, uh, chronic kidney disease, gout. Uh, it has a huge role in all of those and, is, and it's not a helpful thing if you are unfortunate enough to be diagnosed with a cancer. It doesn't cause cancer, but it certainly can propagate growth. So, so um, that's how I got involved. And if I can say just two more things, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of us are drawn to this field, working with patients to improve their health and lose weight because they, we've had issues with our weight too. And I'm really no exception. I uh, had a pretty serious problem when I was in high school. Uh, I started high school, was pretty much normal weight. And then in the middle of those years, I think when I was 15, 16, I gained a lot of weight like 45, 50 pounds. And that came from, you know, a sweet tooth, which we know today is really sugar dependence or addiction. And it was definitely harming me. Uh, I had a checkup with my pediatrician and my blood pressure was really high. I think my mom thought I was going to have a stroke. My blood pressure was like 180 over 110. I mean, it was really high. And, uh, so this guy did a workup and the conclusion was you just need to lose weight. So he told me I should lose weight. He didn't tell me how to lose weight. Okay. The other thing is uh, we all know in medicine that when people lose weight, their blood pressure goes down. No one ever talks about why does it go down? It goes down because insulin resistance goes down and there's so much more data available that shows most cases of essential hypertension are from insulin resistance. So, so anyway, um, back in that day, and I'm going to just date myself, this is the late 70s, Dr. Atkins had already made his wave through 
in the 70s. And my mom had been on Atkins and she, she, we talked about it and said, okay, I'm going to do that. And, and I did lose some weight. And then uh, I actually kind of supplemented it with, with fasting. And that definitely was not in vogue at that time. Uh, I was 17 and I went to the public library and I checked out a book on fasting. And so I, I added that and over four to six months, I lost that weight that I gained in those two years. And uh, over the years, you know, weight can certainly fluctuate. And I found, you know, the, the, the non-fat craze, you know, you try to do that to take off a few pounds. And what always ended up working was low carb, keto, and fasting. And uh, that was 45 years ago. So uh, it, it, it does work and it can be a lifestyle. And since my first meeting in 2013, it really became the way, this is my primary diet now. I, I don't go back to it. It's just how I eat now. And I, I think the last thing that I want to say is that uh, uh, this is a hard journey. It's, it's hard to make these changes. And I just can really empathize, especially with women, because we really struggle and have so many more issues with body image than men do. We get tied to our self-esteem being all tied up in a scale and what we weigh. And I, I think in our program, and I, I'm sure Jeremiah does this too, we try to get away from the scale and look at what is your, your body composition? What is your, your body fat? What is your visceral fat? What is your muscle mass? And try to optimize all these things to improve health with reversing their diabetes, uh, normalizing their cholesterol, their blood pressure, their chronic kidney disease, their joint pain. So I am super excited about this event and partnering with you guys, Low Carb USA, and our four health systems that Jeremiah is going to talk about. I, I think it's such a big problem. We need everyone in the medical community working on it together. So that's my story. Yeah, so interesting you mentioned the the four health systems it was um almost unfamiliar to me i i've never even heard people talking about health systems that they were that they were a part of i don't know if that's uh unique to to the to your area or not but um it's interesting um, i think it's amazing that that all four in the area are are coming together um to collaborate on this and 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 try to make it happen and get reach as many people as they can. Um, I believe one of them is called Essentia, which is you're a part of, Jeremiah, and they're actually stepped up to be uh, the platinum sponsor for this for this event. Um, but all the other um, systems have, have stepped up as well. So um, it's, it's almost un unnerving for me to actually have people coming and and wanting to put money in in as sponsors to to help us put these things on like with San Diego and Boca, us Pam like we we've got one or two like hardcore supporters that that always come and um, support the event as as sponsors. But yes, it's, it's always a, such a struggle to find people to get enough money in the end to to get out of the hotel when we finish, you know. So it's almost a breath of fresh air that, that all four systems that you guys are involved with are stepping up without me pleading with them or, or anything. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so maybe Jeremiah, you can you can explain the, the the four systems and where how they all fit sort of fit into yeah. into the scene. Absolutely, I'd encourage all the listeners to uh, to Google Brainerd Brainerd Minnesota and kind of just zoom in on some of the surrounding areas might give a better perspective. And, you know, in this part of the state, and it's probably the case in other parts of the U.S., there are, you know, larger healthcare systems and smaller systems, you know, a mixture of hospitals and clinics. And, you know, most of the time we're competing for patients, right? We're competing for market share, competing for revenue too in these times, particularly these times, mm -hmm. to stay afloat, stay in the black, and carry our mission forward. Um, however, in this situation, I just want to share the utmost gratitude for the key physician leaders in the four systems we'll, we'll talk about. And interestingly, all of whom I, I think 
were key components in this process. And Angie can, I think, attest to this because they personally in their clinical practices have seen with their patients the same outcomes Angie and I have seen, Doug, that you and Pam have seen that so many of your clinicians and patients have seen. And that in, in turn catalyzes this desire to let's step forward. You know, let's come out of our silos of competition and support the greater good, the metabolic health and wellness of our kind of rural northern Minnesota communities. Um, and if, I think if we can do this, if we can coalesce for this greater mission, this greater good now, if not only for us, but for our children and subsequent generations, I think any part of America, any part of the world can do this. And I sort of envision by way of this conference, this has already happened here for the last few years, you know, whether you're a, a patient or an interested citizen in, in Crosby or, or Angie practices or in Brainerd or where I'm at or, or in Staples just to our West, you can show up to your physician's office or provider's office and get the same message as it pertains to your metabolic health. And I think the cascade, the trickle down effect of this to that person and the people they impact, I mean, it's, it's immeasurable and it's exactly what we need to make a meaningful change to dent this pandemic. It starts really from the ground up. Um, so back, back to the systems, Essential Health, as Doug, you mentioned, it's my employer uh, out of Duluth, Minnesota. They're the platinum sponsor. We've got uh, Cuyuna Regional Medical Center just to Brainerd's East where uh, Dr. Aspen works. Um, also an a important sponsor, and obviously I want to call out Angie and her hours and hours of work and, and sort of background into this. I told her before we started, when I did this in 2019, my wife said I should never do it again by myself because it's like planning a wedding. So I think Doug and Pam can attest to that. Uh, and then two more systems. We've got uh, Riverwood, which is a bit further to the east of Brainerd. That's in Aitken, Minnesota. And then finally, uh, Lakewood, which is in Staples, uh, a bit to the other direction. Um, and Ryan Kroll there, family medicine doc, I want to give kudos to him for, for kind of helping his system bring this to uh, support. Um, and again, I'm so excited for this day to have us all come together. I think we're going to have a lot of clinicians from our systems there, obviously interested patients. And I, and I foresee the, the immeasurable impact of this going years down the road into our community and those we will call this for. So, Angie, anything you want to add to that? Um, I do want to... Uh, say that Essentia is a much bigger facility. The, the other three of us are remote access. So they're 25 bed hospitals. They are, they are small, but it's, it's quite amazing to me, the high quality of care in the communities up here. So um, that's, that's all I wanted to add. So. What an incredible example you guys are building because um, that, whole purpose of the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, the SMHP, is to educate practitioners to work together, to continuing education, to meet the needs of their patients, uh, populations, and their communities. And as we know, the epidemics of all these chronic illnesses is just continuing to rise. As hard as the majority of our physicians, nurse practitioners, physicians, nurses, and all the hospital staffs are working with the the unfortunately incorrect information or not enough information. So like you said, Angie, oh yes, we're gonna support you to lose weight or we're gonna tell you you should probably lose weight but not support you in the best way to lose weight, I should say. Right. Um, so as we gain and are able to teach and pay it forward to our other colleagues, uh, more effective strategies, innovative interventions through your yearly visits through programs that you set up that are going to meet the needs of the patient individually or even in a group setting which a lot of people are doing but as you as clinicians coming together to teach each other so you can make a bigger impact what a, an example you are leading the, we can do this in every community around the country and then around the world as well i love it i i hope that we get there because uh if the systems can come together and I, I think, I mean, you guys are in Texas now, but when you were in California, yeah. you know, Kaiser is the huge system out there. But Kaiser is, but there's also a large, another large HMO in San Diego area who's very big. And they're actually building the most beautiful, both, both organizations. So Sharp, Restilly, and Kaiser are the biggest. And there's a few other, um, one that goes along with the hospital system, um, that I'm not going to be able to remember the name at this moment, but, you know, building really large facilities in an HMO setting um, that are, um, that are reaching a lot of people. And, you, and we've spoken to a few of those community members are not system-wide education processes yet. 
as much as our um, members are driving that um, education process, though, because there are feet on the ground doing so as you guys are. Well, I think as therapeutic carbohydrate restriction or low carb becomes more and more accepted, uh, I think it is going to infiltrate into the bigger systems. So at least I hope so. I think it will. You agree, Jeremiah? Uh, I mean, a hundred percent. And I think we're, you know, those of us that are called to be leaders or senior leaders in our system, as I am in, in the inpatient setting of my hospital, you know, we see every day that, you know, as I relate to patients in my consultations in clinic, that all, most of all the conditions we see in the hospital that, you know, bring so much suffering and cost are branches of the same metabolic tree. And, you know, I think we do a really good job in Western medicine at clipping the branches, you know, here's your stent, here's your CPAP, here's your statin, here's your artificial knee. All those things have their place, and I don't want to underscore their importance. <clears throat> However, if we think about this in another paradigm, and I think we do that really well here, at Low Carb USA and um, other spaces like this, we have to think about the trunk and what's fertilizing those roots and, and look upstream, if you will, to ask ourselves, why is this river, why is this person's life experience so so toxic, so, so challenged? And uh, I think systems inevitably will need to do that because the way that this is going, right, the amount of money we spend on healthcare, the life expectancy impact is minimal, the GDP impact is substantial. We have to look at another approach. And I think this one is, the value is off the charts. Well, our current model just is not sustainable, honestly. So yeah, if I could so, just kind of add, yeah, oh, go ahead, yeah. Doug. Okay. I was just going to add one more thing, kind of at the system level. So I, you know, many clinicians on the listening to this uh, podcast and hopefully attending the event will be familiar with the triple aim. It's triple aim is put forth by the Institute of Healthcare Improvement, and it speaks really about four quadrants. One is population health. The second is the experience of the patient's care. The third is cost. And then the fourth is the clinician or physician experience slash burnout. And I think we can all agree that in our current systems, we manage type 2 diabetes, but these, are, these epidemics have only grown. The drugs and downstream costs are skyrocketing. Patients are just, dis, dis, you know, people are disillusioned and, and sort of frustrated. And no one ever has come to me and probably to Angie to say, thank you for putting me on insulin or thank you for this additional medicine, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, Clinician burnout is off the charts. I mean, it's 50 to 70% of any given system that many physicians and APPs are looking to exit medicine and many have, right, since COVID. And what I would put forth, and I will talk more about this when I speak at the conference, is sort of a new paradigm, right? If we think about reversing type 2 diabetes and obesity, discontinuing expensive medications, saving costs, saving side effects, saving all these things, but I'll most importantly, witnessing daily, I even almost say hourly, right? Grateful and inspired patients living with renewed vitality. I mean, I get more hugs and tears and high fives in a single clinic day than I did years of primary care before this, right? People are so grateful to have this option to have hope. And then fourth, um, and I hope to hit this home with some of the clinicians attending, is the burnout factor. Is, is finally feeling like I have and the last few years, and I think Angie, you can speak to this too, that, wow, like this is, this is what I was called to do, like actually healing people. I can see this objectively in their numbers. We can measure it in their waist. We can see it in how fast they walk up a flight of stairs or how good they feel when they're at the beach, whatever it might be, right? That impact is just catalyzes and sort of as a positive feedback cycle for all the potential change that we can do at a system level, checking all four of those boxes. Yeah, there's, there's so many stories of... Um physicians like that as well. I mean, really prominent ones, David Unwin, Dr. David Unwin in the UK is like that. I mean, he was ready to retire. Like he was so burned out from not being able to help anybody. And one of his patients actually found out about this and did it on their own. And that's the story. He called the, the patient in to what, find out why they weren't filling their meds and uh, or their prescriptions. And, you know, he didn't recognize the person sitting in, in the waiting room. Like he literally told them that, that they, he was expecting um, someone else and, you know, he, he, would, uh, he would attend to them afterwards if they was, would stay. And then he said, no, it's me. <laughs> like, seriously. And... When I did a podcast interview with him, because I had told the story a number of times, you know, 
but what he said to me was the bit that you that you don't know or haven't been telling people is the fact that she'd actually yelled at me. She was angry and she yelled at me because I was her doctor and I had not known this and not told her about it and offered it to her as, as an option. And he had then was mortified and went off and started learning about it. And in fact, the, the group that she, that she was a part of, um, they wouldn't let him join. Like they, they, they feel like doctors are trolls and um and the, and they would join to try and scupper the discussions and stuff and and so he had to earn the privilege of being allowed into the organization over wow. some time like showing yeah. how he really was you know embracing this this new concept now and eventually they let him in and now he does amazing things with them and everything but he had to earn his way in there because they wouldn't let him in just, you know, on the basis of being was specifically because he was a doctor. So the yeah, stories like that are, um, and then he, and they all say the same. Brian, Dr. Brian Linsky is, is, is the same. Like I became a doctor to help people and I just wasn't helping anybody. And it becomes, uh, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, I'm sure, but it becomes so depressing um for you guys and so it's just amazing that we've come across this intervention i suppose and that that enables you to to actually help people we uh so maybe you we've mentioned low carb usa and the smhp um we started low carb usa to to put on a, a conference initially um in san diego to give physicians and doctors and scientists a platform to speak from so we started and we put on our very first event in san diego with the idea of it just being one but then people were so excited about it when you're putting the next one on when you're putting the next one on and so we started to you know plan the next one for for florida in the january and now the one that we just did in boca back in january this year was was our 20th event um, the one that we do in Brainerd Lakes will be in 22 already. Um, and in the process of, of um, that all happening, it sort of became apparent that we needed an organization to represent these practitioners um, and, and have their backs in a way. Uh, you know, there's no, everybody was like off in the wilderness all doing their own thing. Um, very fractured uh, community really and there was no unifying force or organization and uh dr trocolation and dr robert cybers were um were two of the people that that were really felt that was necessary to to we've got the ada and the ama and they're teaching all the doctors as far as they're concerned teaching all the doctors a lot of rubbish and um, we need we need an organization that represents doctors that that want to embrace this intervention. And so I put a board of directors together and we uh, we basically formed this nonprofit called the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners. And the point of that is to represent the, the practitioners in this space and provide, patients and that with resources and stuff that they know they can they can have faith in that they know that it's not just some blogger on the internet that's talking stuff that they don't know whether it's 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 valid or not so um and, and one of the big things that we have in that is an accreditation process where we have a whole different pathways where physicians and, and other practitioners, right down to health coaches even, can get accredited and become metabolic health practitioners, use MHP behind their name. And Pam was mentioning it earlier that uh, it's happened a number of times, but one in particular that I remember a lady doctor who I wrote to her and said, hey, your, your application for this accreditation has been approved. And she wrote back and she said, Doug, 
this means more to me than when I became an MD because wow. now I feel like I can really help people. And that kind of made my day. <laughs> and it still does um, because that's why we do this and why we, because we, we just feel so uh, obliged almost to teach other people what we didn't know. I mean, just, just a, a few years, a few years ago. Um, I can just build on that. So when you say some of, some of these uh, physicians and scientists names, I think of the Newton quote, you know, I've seen higher because I've stood on the shoulder of giants. Mm -hmm. I certainly feel that way. And, and I think really, even since we referenced some of these dates, 2016, 17, 18 kind of sentinel points in all of our journeys, just think too, and I'm just reflecting on the amount of data that's come out since then that's demonstrated that this way of eating, you know, is more effective than anything for glycemic control, according to the ADA. We know that's endorsed by the Obesity Medicine Association. Uh, cravings go down significantly. Hunger is controlled. Society has increased. We've also got data since then, and much of this we'll talk about at the conference, that, you know, overall this reduces cardiovascular risk. It doesn't promote, like was previously thought in some circles, higher CV risk. Um, and much less than any, many other evolving and very fascinating uh, impacts on things like mental health and memory and cancer, which are about, you know, kind of outside of the scope of this conversation. But yeah, I'm just reflecting on even the last eight years to think about how far we've come in this space and how you've been a key part of that dog. And I'm really excited to see kind of where this goes eight years, 80 years from now, wherever we end up. Right. Yeah. And I, I remember now where, where I wanted to go with this was because not only are your systems stepping up and actually putting some money into this event to help us make sure that um, that we don't make a loss on it? <laughs> but, I, but I know uh, Jeremiah will talk. I mean, there's biking, there's kayaking. Yeah. People can go out on a pontoon and go lake. Uh, yeah, lots amazing. of walk. There's a lot of activities to do if you like the outdoors and nature here. Yeah, so. and I think, you know, with our other events, I know, I know we, we started with San Diego because we thought this summer San Diego destination spot. And I think a lot of people came expecting to enjoy San Diego. But then the conference was so good that they literally like sat there wall to wall through through all four days and and didn't some of them didn't even go outside the hotel, let alone you know, to walk along the bay. They just, uh, they just sat there and, and listened to the conferences. So as much as they intended to do something, I think they thought oh, if there would be time in a month, they could go and miss a couple of lectures and, and go and do something you know, touristy, but none of them ever do. Well, this well, is a, a unique opportunity here because it's, it's still a Sunday. It's not like they have to to get home uh, um, because work on Monday. So it's a chance to, to not rush home on Saturday night, um, stay for dinner on Saturday night. We've got an amazing low carb dinner that we're gonna do. Um, and, then, and then enjoy the Sunday. You do all the other activities that they have there at Craigans. Um, and I do you make a plug for the dinner uh, on Saturday night. As, as as Doug pointed out, you know, people would stay for the lecture. The dinner is just as great because you can sit at a table where there's a speaker that really intrigued you and you might want to be able to ask them a question. And it's it's a great time to network. So right. huge plug for staying for the dinner. Yeah. After. I mean, there's an expo um, afterwards for an hour and a half or two hours or so after the event um, where we've got all these local vendors that you were talking about. One of the vendors is our one of our uh, long-term supporters, which is the Dry Farm Wines, which makes sort of zero sugar uh, wines that um, even diabetics and that find that they're able to drink because it doesn't it, it doesn't affect their blood sugar. Um, but people are going to be staying for that anyway so and then from there we're going to at that 7 30 ish or something we're going to those that are that are going for the dinner are going to mosey over to the to the uh the dining room and, and have dinner so you're already there um it's evening you're going to leave there and go somewhere to eat dinner so why not stay why not stay and have a dinner that that, that we're working very hard with the chefs to produce so that it so that people can 
you know, like you go to a restaurant normally, you have to find a plan, how to make a plan with what's with what's on the menu to not eat all the rubbish that that we generally try not to eat. Um, whereas here, the, what people love about it is that they don't even have to be concerned because they know that it's um, it's cooked in butter instead of vegetable oil for one thing. It doesn't have any excessive carbohydrates. You've only got the the low carbohydrate vegetables, all the different meats and stuff that that we um, that we're going to work with the chef to make available, and people can just relax and and order and take anything they want from the buffet and know that uh, that it's going to be good for them. And share more stories like this, so Angie and Jeremiah are going to be able to share their thoughts yes. on the building the community and where they started and where they've come from and where they're going. So um, the conversations are invaluable where you guys are going to connect and the collaborations that I've seen come out of any of our previous events, like Jeremiah, I think you were talking before we started talking on here, the momentum that's been gained from just the events that you did in 2018, 19, what do you envision the education and the connections we're bringing people? Yeah, no, great question, Pam. I could I could just start with you know, Minnesota late September oh, is an amazing place to be. <laughs> we often think about right, like the Northeast, Maine, Massachusetts, beautiful spots with the colors. It's very similar in Minnesota. So if anybody listening hasn't been to this part of the world, I encourage you to really consider this for that reason. Also, there is a Delta Airport hub in Brainerd, so like fifteen miles from the conference. So super oh. slick, twenty minute flight from Minneapolis or MSP North. To Brainerd, pretty slick to get here. And then if you're coming for like maybe you know Thursday through Sunday or Friday through Sunday, in the downtime, you've already mentioned this a little bit, but the trails, the lakes, the ability to kind of get out on the water with the pontoon from the resort are phenomenal. We, you know, Minnesota's land of ten thousand lakes, and Brainerd Lakes is kind of the centerpiece of all of that in that geography. So great place to visit. I really envision you know you know a lot of probably may, maybe newer clinicians to this space leaving like we have angie and i have before just feeling energized feeling engaged feeling a lot more hope and i do think that from this the impact on again their communities and the patients that they're called to serve is is going to coalesce and just again create this momentum change to to wherever that person goes back to live and practice fantastic okay yeah anybody well, else got any final words or we gonna well, call it I a day I'd like to just say uh, that we will have seven speakers. There'll be seven CME. Uh, we'll have three local speakers. That'll be Jeremiah, myself, and Dr. Sean Roberts, who's a general surgeon, bariatric surgeon. Then uh, I know your audience is very familiar with uh, Rob Silas. He'll, he'll be coming. Uh, Mark Kukazella and Gurpreet Pada, who will be talking about pain and metabolic health. And then we have Dr. Vera Tarman coming from Toronto, who will be discussing food addiction. So we've got a nice uh, lineup. So really and strong a lineup. Array, yeah. Wide array of information for the clinician and the um, tools that you need to help more people will be discussed and the science behind it. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, um, low carb USA dot org not dot com dot org if you go to lowcarbusa.org and i'll put it in uh in the notes as well um and then if you go to the events and you hover over the events there's a drop down at the moment branded lakes is second once the san diego events over it'll be at the top and um you click on there and it goes to this page it'll tell you all about the event um she can have a look at all the vendors all the speakers that if you click on the speakers names it gives her the bios what they do um and then yeah there's a there's a button there to go and buy your ticket and come and join us um we'd love to see you there the meeting will start uh there'll be seven to eight a.m registration uh, on the saturday uh, and then the talks will start at eight thirty. Uh, but Friday night, there'll be a reception for the speakers. All the speakers will get here on Friday. And uh, this is an opportunity for those of you that are familiar with some of the speakers. If if you want to come Friday night, stay at Craigan's, uh, 
and and can visit and talk network so yeah that, so the, so that's another say, opportunity so yeah. so the reception uh will have the speakers there but it's not for the speakers so that so i think just to be clear that that any anybody who's who's signed up is welcome to come and and join that join the reception right so there's right. a small charge to to cover the, the food and drinks but um but yeah the, the idea is that we that everybody comes and as and you were saying it's like your opportunity to stand around and chat with some fairly influential people and and pick their brains in, in an informal um setting it, uh, so yeah so the the reception on the friday and the dinner on the saturday we encourage people to come to both of those and then stick around and entertain yourselves on on the sunday at, at the craigens resort you know bring your tennis shoes so you can be outside and enjoy hopefully yeah. beautiful weather that day so yeah no, i'm excited praying for beautiful weather weather and everybody come on friday you can get in early relax get a good night's sleep before the event starts um, yeah, and that's the other thing is that the, so before that reception starts there were, there's an early registration going on oh, yeah. so that you can get your badge in peace without having to stand in a long queue yeah um, the, the next the next morning because now you got to get there even earlier because we're starting really early to to get through all of this stuff so um if you don't want to have to get there that much earlier just to get your badge then come and register on I'm friday night you. and join us at the reception Excellent. Okay, Jeremiah, Angie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for all the work that you've put in to help us um, plan this thing. And as I mentioned a minute ago, I'm getting, just talking about it now, I'm getting excited. It's, it's something different that we haven't done before. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be awesome. We're just really honored to be planning it with you and uh, see the impact it can make in your community. Thank thanks, you. thanks so much for partnering with us. We're we're really excited about this event and uh, educating our physicians, our medical professionals, and the community. So, awesome. Thank yeah, you. thank you, everybody. You've been listening to an episode of the Low Carb USA podcast. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com/slash Low Carb USA.